This is KLTV News Update. Good morning. The cafe is open on Saturdays from 10 a.m. till 4.30 p.m. and evenings from 6.30 p.m. till 8.30 p.m. At Kingdom Life Youth Centre, it's a great for those looking to enjoy a cup of coffee and fellowship. The Kingdom Life Manchester annual AGM is on March 24th. And for those becoming Kingdom Life partners, the induction ceremony is on Easter Sunday, March 31st. Get ready to experience the ultimate fusion of talent and passion. Introducing Michael Alfonso's latest single, Freedom to Worship. Join us for an unforgettable evening of soul-stirring melodies and electrifying performances at Kingdom Manchester. Featuring the incomparable vocals of Alison Neptune and the powerhouse sounds of FTW Band, this is a musical journey you won't want to miss. Save the date, April 1st, 2024. Time, 5 p.m. venue, Kingdom Manchester. Let's ignite our spirits and revel in the joy of music together. A special day indeed. Also mark your calendars for Good Friday service on March 29th with Pastor Obi and Easter Sunday service on the 31st with Pastor Aaron. It's going to be a spiritually uplifting weekend. Good morning, everyone. Here are some events happening in the church. We are looking for volunteers to operate the notices computer during our Sunday services. If you are interested in helping out, please contact Pastor Obi. Your assistance is greatly appreciated. The funeral service for Gaynor Chapman will take place in the church on Friday 28th of April 2024. At 12.30 p.m. we extend our condolences to the Chapman family and invite all who wish to pay their respects to join us. We are pleased to announce that Pastor Aaron will be ordained on Friday 3rd of May 2024, at the annual AO Convention. The ceremony will be held at the Harrogate Conference Center and will begin at 9 a.m. Let us celebrate this significant milestone in Pastor Aaron's ministry. A baptismal service will be conducted on Saturday 12th of May 2024. If you or a family member are interested in being baptized, please speak with Pastor Aaron. Please note that our Hubs program will be taking a spring break. The program will resume in the week beginning 22nd of May 2024. We encourage all participants to enjoy this time off and look forward to seeing you when we return. Have a great week ahead filled with peace, joy and blessings.
Lord, when we are able to press beyond the words in worship and into the presence of God, where the worship is almost like a catalyst into His presence and into His Spirit. Um, and it's important for us, I mean, Maxine, what you shared about the struggle of your flesh in fasting, so it is in times of worship that there's a struggle in our flesh to switch off than to stay switched on. And I want to encourage you to just continue to stay switched on. Because it's in that pressing through, in that pressing of ourselves decreasing and Him increasing, that the things that we read about or the things that we've heard about aren't just things we've read and heard, but they're things that we see. Do you hear me? So I want to thank you all for pressing in. So important uh, that we continue until we're face to face in glory. Amen? Amen. With the King of Kings, that we continue to press in in His presence. Thank you, team. Thank you, Luke and the band. I'm going to call you Mike, but I never thought that. There's a running show. Then, the, the flow of the Spirit. Um, the Lord kind of redirected my message this morning, um, uh, which he's good at. God's good at redirecting messages, you know? There's only one person nodding in the phone. What are you talking about? <laughs> Praise God. So we have been in, like I said, um, in the middle of 20 days of prayer and fasting. And um, we're on day 14. Yeah. So uh, six more days after today. How many of you are struggling? I mean, Maxine, that was great confession. Kevin, I know you're struggling. It's all right. Uh, how many of you are struggling? Let's be honest. Just who's struggling with the fast? It's okay. You're not going to be condemned. You're not going to be judged. You're, you're, you're in good company, you know? Hey, even I struggled. It was, uh, it, until a couple months ago, I really wasn't someone who fasted. Not because I didn't want to fast, but because I have to eat to keep migraines and things away. Uh, but God has been disciplining me to trust in Him in the fast. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And, um, and it's becoming, it's not, I wouldn't say it's becoming easier because your flesh is struggling. But it's becoming better. Yeah? Because of what God's doing. And I thank you, Maxine, for just encouraging everyone that what is it, as Pastor Obi had, had uh, said, what is it that God is asking you to do? And if you've been struggling or if you've just given up, you've got six days left. Yeah? You know? Maybe it's to do one more extra day or one more extra something. Um, because it's a time that is serious. Um, fasts aren't called corporately so unless there's a reason. And how do you know that the last three months we've been under a lot of attack here? I don't know if you're aware, but the devil just doesn't like the fact that Jesus wins. You hear me? He doesn't like the fact that Jesus wins. And it's very easy for us to become overwhelmed with the cares of this world and the things that we struggle with. And using the world as a way to medicate. Oh, did I say that? I did. Um, I was talking to Anthony earlier this morning, and he said that, um, you know, the, the, the uh, third world problems and the, the Western world problems are two different things. The third world understands their reliance upon God because yeah. they don't have the comforts of the Western world. Do you hear me? Come on, yeah, that's, that's what it is, isn't it? Amen. And it's a, it's a calling up to us. Some of you said that it was very powerful, and I want to hit on it before I get my message. Oftentimes we're moved by our feelings and we call it God. I don't feel like going to church today. I think God wants me to have rest. When does God not want you to go to church? I don't get it. When does he not want you to be a part of his community? That he saved you out of darkness and into light. Oh, God doesn't, he doesn't mind that if I take a nap while I pray. Sometimes we do take naps when we pray just because it's hard. Yeah? I 
remember when I was going to go and see somebody uh, with some authority uh, about the merge that we were going to do um, way back a couple years ago. And I got up early to pray because I don't like to go see people with authority. Anybody else like that? Call them the big wigs, some people you know that phrase. I sat down in my in, in the, the living room and I started to <laughs> and I slept for half an hour. And I had another half hour to go because I had to go. I was like, I woke up and went, oh Lord, I didn't mean to sleep. And I just prayed, and then there was something on the telly. Um, something to do with the politics and all that. And this guy got up to speak, and there were three things he said, and the Lord said, that's what's going to happen today, now go. And you remember that story? So what I'm saying is that, yeah, God understands that we have our struggles, we have our flesh, we have our physical bodies that get tired. Yeah? yeah? yeah. But if he sees your heart yeah. in the struggle, if he sees your heart in the fast, yeah, fasting isn't just about getting slim if there's no prayer involved. It's got to be both. The reason for it is this. There is power in prayer and fasting. Did you hear me? There is power in prayer and fasting. And I want to talk about that this morning. Amen? Turn your Bibles to Psalm 24. And we're going to go for uh, verse 7 through 10. Psalm 24, 7 through 10. This is a, 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 just a mind-blowing, if you get it, scripture in the Bible when it comes to Jesus. Yeah? It says, lift up your heads, all you gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and lift them up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? It's the Lord. It's the Lord, the host. He is the King of glory. Amen. Amen. Now, what does that have to do with prayer and fasting? Now, you may have heard me say this before. When it's speaking about ancient doors and gates, it's not talking about buildings. It's talking about you and me. We are the ancient doors. We are the ancient gates. So this is lift up your heads. Gates don't have heads, do they? Have you ever seen a gate with a head on it? Well, maybe back in the day there were heads on it for other reasons. But we are the ancient doors, for we were first created to be the dwelling place of God on earth. Amen? Amen? So this scripture is talking about how do we then get to that place where we're opening up the gates and we're letting the king of glory in, you know? We want the king, well, we're going to be seeing that in a bit because the Lord will put it in my heart. We can sing it, we can read it, but until we get to the place where we open up, it's just words. And this is a word that's spoken to us. Open up. Lift up your heads. Open up. You everlasting doors. The king of glory will come in. Who is the king of glory? Now this is Jehovah of hosts. He is the king of glory. I was with a, 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 an American a missionary. Now I guess I'd call him brother in Christ and friend. Uh, yesterday at this, the minister of training conference and, and he's come over from the states um, to help with the sons of God uh, in the church planting um, operations looking at where 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 the gospel's not reaching amen for for sons of God to go and plant churches in different areas of the country but he's also here to do more than that he said he, he's a tech savvy type of guy working computers he says that only lasts so long and then you're bored so he's got involved in a church in Warrington. But he has to go back, because he's a missionary, he has to go back to the States on furlough. Furlough means you go back, you have a rest, but you also fundraise. You go into churches and you ministry, you let them know what you're doing on the field, which is England for them. 
But he said, I'm struggling to go back because the church that I was sent from has had a terrible thing happen to it. The, there was a leadership, there was a, a, a political wrangling. How many of you know what political wranglings in church can do? And the pastor and his wife, who were close friends of theirs, were basically run out of the church. And uh, the church split. People who were upset with that left. And those who remained were rejoicing. Whoa. Ah, oh, does that get you where it gets me? It gets me in the gut that people rejoice over treating people wrong, regardless. Sometimes there are things that happen that there needs to be discipline in the church. But in this situation, it was a situation of overthrowing power in church. And he was struggling because he said, I've got to go on furlough and I, 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 there are people there that I love, but I, I can't bring myself to go there because of what they've done to my friends. And in the midst of this conversation, I just felt the Lord prompt me to encourage him that, and this is something for us to understand, who did it? And he went, what do you mean? Because he was going to say, well, these people. I said, no, 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 no. No, no, no. The Bible says we wrestle not against what? Flesh and blood. Flesh and blood but against every principality and power in the dark world that sets itself against God. And it's the work of the enemy to bring division. Do you hear me? And so I encouraged him. I said, stop looking at the people and look at the power that's at work. The Bible says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I said, maybe the Lord needs you to go back. And he says, oh, if I go back, I'm going to go repent. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's your flesh. But he may want you to go back to bring correction in the right way. Because the, all the enemy wants to do is do what? Steal, kill, and destroy. And if he can put division in the church, he can go do whatever else he wants to do. I read a quote one time that said, the church just needs, he just needs to get the church upset about one little thing, get them all fighting about everything, and he can carry on in his business as the real vicar of the village. Whew. So, you're saying, what does this have to do with prayer and fasting? It's very powerful to understand that in prayer and fasting, what we're doing is we are actually asking the king of glory to come in. Asking the king of glory to take over the circumstances that we're facing. Do you hear me? It was in the, the book of Exodus. Now first what I want to do is I want to go into with Jesus. I want to start with Jesus. Is that alright? Can we start with Jesus? He's the best one to start with. He's the best one to finish with. He's just the best. Amen? Amen. He had come off of the Mount of Transfiguration. And uh, he and, and two other, three other disciples were coming with him. And they came into a scene in a situation that was drawing a crowd. Turn to Matthew 17 for me. 14 through 20 we're going to read. And this is the scene set where there was a man who brought his son who was, had a demonic possession that caused epileptic fits. And it says, And when they were come to the multitude, they came to him, a man kneeling to him, and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is epileptic and suffering grievously. For oft times he's fallen into the fire, and oft times he's into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not cure him. And Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long should I bear with you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked him, and the demon went out of him. And the boy was cured for that, from that hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast it out? Have you ever been in a situation like, why couldn't I, why couldn't it happen? Yeah? yeah? 
And he said unto them, Because your little faith, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall unto this mountain say, Be removed. And I'm struggling with this king, ASV. Can you go to ESV for me? This isn't a language that I speak. Do you? No offense, Simon. You're doing a great job. We can get the ESV on there. Go NIV. Yeah, go NIV. Thank you. Okay. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. I want to go into Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. So that's the next book over. I want to go to verses 14 through 29. 14 through 29. When the disciples came to the other disciples, when they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him into the ground, and he foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked you to, your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It had often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us if you can. Said Jesus, everything is possible for... Oh, sorry, let me try that again. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Everything is possible for who? The one who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and you spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up to his feet and he stood. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive him out or drive it out? He replied, this kind can only come out by prayer. And in other translations, it says prayer and fasting. Yeah? By prayer and fasting. Jesus was in a situation where he, sometimes I wonder, Jesus, you're being a bit mean to everybody. How long do I have to put up with you? Why are you not getting it? Why is it you're struggling to get it? It's because there's something that happens in prayer and fasting where you're no longer trying to do it in your own strength. But you're tapping into the strength of the King of Glory. You're tapping into the, the ability of God himself to deal with the situation that you may be facing. In both of these passages of scriptures, it's the same story, but two different analogies as to why it couldn't happen. In the one, it talks about your faith as a mustard seed. Your, your little faith ain't working. But then he says, but if you have the faith of a mustard seed, which is a tiny little thing, you can say to the mountain or say to the demon or say to whatever situation you're facing, be removed and cast into the sea. But in the book of Mark, he says, it only comes out by prayer and fasting. I'm here to encourage you this morning that when you're praying and fasting, what happens is 
your faith becomes empowered. Do you hear me? Your faith becomes empowered that you're able to speak to the situation, speak to the demonic stronghold, speak to that which is, is overpowering you, not by your mind, but by the power of the Holy Spirit, say, be removed, be cast out, and no longer come back. Jesus said what? The question was, if you can, and Jesus countered that, if you can. He says, it happens to those who believe. The question is, do you believe? When you're praying, are you still doing, well, God, if you can. God, if, if you wouldn't mind. Or are you in that place where you're fasting and praying that your faith becomes infused with the power of God. That no matter what you're facing, you can speak to it and see it happen. Have you ever had a situation where you've had to speak to something and you knew you couldn't do it on your own? Anybody? 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 Yeah. I have to speak into situations to see a deliverance. But I cannot speak in my own strength. I've got to die to myself that he may live in me. Open up, lift up your hands, open up your gates, open up your doors so that the king of glory will come in. The only way it opens up is when you fast and pray. I'm learning this myself. So I should be sitting down right here with you all saying, preach it, brother. Yeah. You struggle with dumplings. I would struggle with not having dumplings. <laughs> so good. <laughs> but if I am not wanting, no, sorry, let me put it another way. If I'm wanting something without doing the way, the right way to get it done, I'm not going to get what I want. So often we're moved by the impulse of our flesh and not the impulse of the Holy Spirit. Because our flesh speaks louder into our ears than often the Spirit. Why? Because we're facing a situation. We're trying to deal with it. We're trying to cope with it. And we don't know what to do. I would just say, if Jesus, you could just possibly, just maybe... What I found with Christ, any time he faced somebody that saw the challenge and knew Jesus was the answer, they didn't really go into the ifs. The woman whose child was dead, Jesus said that the, 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 the crumb, the, the food is for the, the children's bread is for the children. What did she say? But even the dogs get the crumbs off the table. That was a statement of faith saying, I hear what you're saying. But I know what I need. And I know you're the one who gives that deliverance into what I need. And because of her faith, what happened? Anybody know? Anybody read the Bibles? What happened? What happened with the, when, when he, what did he say? Go, your, woman, your, your, your daughter is, she's alive. She's not dead. And because of her faith in believing in Jesus Christ, she went not questioning whether or not it was done. She knew it was done. Have you ever been in a place where you have to know that it's done? And I'm going, oh, I hope it's done. I hope, I hope it's done. No, it's done. Amen. Amen. Prayer and fast increases the power of your faith will become saturated in the presence of God where no evil is found. The part of fasting and prayer, what we're trying to get to here, is that it brings you to a place where the enemy has nothing of a niggle of a place to say, gotcha. He can't. Because you have come to that place where you're just in the presence of God where the doors have opened up and the king of glory has come in and he has filled the entire castle of your heart. He's filled the entire being that you are. 
He's in your mind. He's in your emotions. He's in your heart. He's in the inner sanctuary where he dwells with you and communes with you. So no matter what is going on around you, you're good. Because the enemy cannot do anything but obey. What does he obey? The word of the Lord. For he sees the king of glory in you. He sees a king that is of glory in you. Do you know that? Sometimes that's hard to fathom. But through the eyes of faith, you can see him. Do you hear me? Amen. When Israel was brought out of captivity in Egypt, they were a bunch of messed up people. And rightly so. They were in a land that rescued them because of their ancestor Joseph. Became a land of slavery. And they were slaves there for 400 years. Around that figure, 400, 430 years. And they're crying out for deliverance and crying out for deliverance and crying out for deliverance. And the, the Passover was set because the plagues were happening. The plagues, all they were about was to show that the Egyptian religion is false. Everything they worship was a false religion. And we know that when it came to the, the, the end part, which seems so gruesome, but was so powerful, the children of Israel were told to do what? They were told to get a lamb, each of them, unblemished lamb, for want for Passover. What was Passover? Does anybody know? The angel of the Lord passed over them. It was called the angel of death. And the reason why the angel of death was coming was because it was coming to kill the firstborn of everything in the land, from person to livestock. And the reason for it was that Pharaoh had set himself up as God. What a false reality Egypt was living in. So the death angel came. Why did it come? To show Pharaoh is just a man and he's not God. For he could not raise his son from the dead. But Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who we're going to celebrate in a week's time, didn't just die, but he rose again because of the power of the King of glory that is in his life. The same spirit that rose Christ Jesus from the dead is where? In us. In us to revive us. is the same. Let's go to Exodus 12. Verse 5 through 8. It says the animals you choose. Must be a year old male. Without defect. And you t may take from them. Take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month. When all the members of the community of Israel. Must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the house where they eat the lambs. The same night they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs, <coughs> or herbs, depending on how you say it, and bread made without yeast. This scripture, the Lord showed me some new things in here that I had never really, we're not going further. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Keep it there. Thank you, son. This scripture says something very powerful I never saw before. And you'll find it very powerful, I pray, that the Lord will help me to deliver it. So they were told, first of all, to get a lamb. We all know that. We, they were told to paint the doorposts and lentil with the lamb's blood as a sign that they are what? Consecrated unto God. So the death angel of Passover, everyone who did just that. And then they were told to roast the meat. No frying, no boiling. It was roasted dumplings. I mean lamb. <laughs> yeah? And they had to eat all that meat in the night. I'm thinking it's a lamb. It's not going to take long. I'm, I'm just, just give me one. You know, I'll be fine. 
But the whole family, everyone had to be in the house. But it says that they had to eat it with bitter herbs. Have you ever eaten bitter herbs? Anything bitter is bitter. No, thank you. But there was a reason for it. And I didn't know it until I was doing the study this time around. And the reason why they had to eat bitter herbs was to remind them of the bitterness of slavery. Remind them of the bitterness of that which they were in. The lamb was eaten. The blood was, was shed. It was on the doorposts of their house. The lamb meat they were eating. The herbs they were eating to remind them of where they had come out from. That it was bitter. And they had to eat the bread that was made without yeast because it was a significant sign of being ready to go. They had to eat with their cloaks tucked in their belt, staff in hand. Why? Because it's time to move. The enemy's had enough. Do you hear me? The enemy's had enough. The, the enemy's had enough. And then when we come to Jesus Christ, the beautiful Lamb of God who was slain from the foundations of the earth were laid, he died on the cross. He, he had what? A bitterness stuffed into his mouth when he was thirsty. He took bitterness upon himself. When his blood was shed, it says in 1 Peter that his blood is on the doorpost of our heart. Because it's not supposed to be something religious that we just do as a, a tradition and a ritual which Israel fell into. The hyssop was used because the hyssop represented truth. And truth, what was interesting, it says that it's an it's a herb that's a wild herb. Truth that's real truth is wild. You can't tame it. You can't tame the truth. You can't make the truth say what you want it to say. Do you hear me? So the blood of Jesus Christ through the hyssop, the truth of God's word, was put upon our hearts. That we are not just a religious folk, we are a folk set free from bitterness of slavery. And yet in the scriptures in Hebrews it says, to take out the roots of bitterness that can easily get within you. Anyone struggling with bitterness today? This young missionary that I was talking to, he was dealing with a root of bitterness in his heart. Because he could not find himself to come to the place where he could come to this people who did wrong to say, I love you despite your wrong. He couldn't easily forgive the wrong that had been done for a root of slavery, oh, sorry, bitterness, rooted within him. Let me tell you, when you've got bitterness in you, you're a slave. Do you hear me? You're a slave. For that's why they ate the herbs of bitterness, to remind them. Anything of bitterness within you is slavery. That's why we're encouraged. Pull out the roots of bitterness. Roots of bitterness. Have you ever seen like a dandelion? If you don't get that root, that dandelion comes back ten times stronger. And you're like, you were just this big last time I tried to pull you out. You gotta get all that root out of you. Because it will grow stronger in you. Those who are bitter don't think they've got the problem. It's everybody else but me. Is it just me? I want to encourage you this morning. In this time of prayer and fasting, deal with bitterness. Deal with those roots. Because when the king of glory comes in, it can't be there. Do you hear me? We want to see the mighty move, the presence and power of God on this earth, and yet we want to hold on to our stuff. Let it go. Let it go. Because when it's time to move, it's time to move. Isaiah 58 is the book, the, sorry, the chapter that talks about true fasting. A true fast isn't that you hold on to bitterness and you're, you're striving with one another and you're breaking up as a church and you're, you're upset with Sister So-and-so and you're up with, up with the pastor and you're upset with this and upset with that. In fact, you're upset with God. 
And here you are, you're on your, your, ash, your, your, your ashes and your sackcloth and you're, God, why don't you do this for me? You might not be eating food, but you're eating bitterness. And the Lord says this, is that the type of fast that I called you to? No wonder people don't want to be a part of the body of Christ. We eat bitterness and singing in the name of Jesus. But the Lord is calling us to a true fast. What's a true fast? A true fast is Isaiah 61. Those who give clothes to those who are naked. Those who provide food for the hungry. Those who visit those in prison. Those who forgive and think of others than themselves. In fact, it says, those who hide their flesh from themselves and talk about their own bodies. So that their own bodies won't cause them to defile themselves in their fasting. But then there's a promise in a true fast. You know what the true promise, the promise of the true fast is? Has anyone ever read it? Let's go to Isaiah 58. No one will be able to say to me, I've never read it. I want our people to know what a true fast is all about. Because it is empowering. It is freeing. It is setting captives free. Isaiah 58, verse 6. It says, Is this not the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness? To undo the straps of the yoke? To let the oppressed go free? And to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house? When you see the naked, to cover him and not, and not to hide yourself from your own flesh? And that one's it's a different way. It's talking about not hiding yourself from your family. Anybody hiding themselves from their family today? You can't fast and, not, and, and do that. You got to see your family. Got to put it right. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn. Do you hear this? Then shall your light, what that means is that which you are in need of, the Lord causes it to break forth like the dawn. Hallelujah. And your healing shall spring up speedily. Hallelujah. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. And you shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, pull out the bitterness. Don't allow bitterness to enslave you ever again. Pull it out. That is a yoke upon you. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, well, it's their fault that I'm bitter. Ooh, I just want to step back. If you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness, and your gloom be as the noon day. And the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose water does not fail. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, and you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairs of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. If you turn back your foot from the Sabbath, from doing your pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, or seeking your own pleasure, or talking idly, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride on the heights of the earth. This is a promise. I don't know about you, but reading that just gets me excited. That when I begin to deal with my stuff in my fasting and praying, God is the one who delivers. He sets me free. He sets me on the heights. He sets the story of streets, of homes, of generations, of brokenness. He restores and he heals when we fast. Because 
when you're not over yourself, you're king, and he will not share his throne with anyone. Do you hear me? I want to see these streets around us repaired. I want to see generations that are lost restored. I want to see healing of broken hearts. I want to see the opening of blind eyes, just spiritual and physical. I want to see the deaf hear. I want to see the mute speak. I want to see the lame walk. I want to see demons trekking themselves out of here. Because they cannot stand in the presence of God.
I hear of you and I need you. I ask you to come into my heart, come into my life. I'm a sinner in need of a savior. I'm a person that's broken and needing healing. I'm someone who's been wandering and now is found. Come into my life and not just be my savior, but be my Lord, be the king of my life. For you are the one that I long for. Take up residence within me, I pray. I receive you now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've prayed that prayer, God takes you at your word. And that's why we pray. And he sees your faith, and he sees your heart, and your desire. To allow him into your heart. To not just be your savior, but to be your Lord. To be your king. Amen. So welcome to the king. God of the family of God. And praise God for your decision this morning. Amen. 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 Praise God. We're going to take up our tithes and offerings now. And if you need an envelope, can you put your hand up? We'll make sure we get one to you at the end. Please some envelopes hand out. A couple of envelopes out here. Gina needs one. Tracy needs one.